I've had the Steam Deck for about six months at this point, and I just recently put out a video of five tips and tricks that every new Steam Deck owner needs to know. Uh, you guys really, really liked that video, so I figured I would make another one. If you missed that video, then when this one's done, make sure you check that out. But this is five more tips and tricks that every Steam Deck owner needs to know. Let's get started. Number one, take control of your battery life by taking control of your screen. The Steam Deck by default has what's known as adaptive brightness. There's a little sensor under the screen that looks at the room, sees how bright the room is, and then adjusts your screen in order to give you the best experience. However, sometimes I think that it makes it brighter than it really needs to be. And that's where it's very, very easy to change the brightness. Now, a lot of people will open up the quick access menu and change the brightness there, or they'll hit the steam button and bring up the display options and turn the brightness down there. But there's actually a much easier way to do it. You just hold down the quick access menu with your right thumb and then use the left joystick up and down and you can adjust the brightness that way. So do yourself a favor, do your battery a favor and turn off adaptive brightness right now. Number two, the back paddles. I had the Steam Deck for about a month before I figured this one out. I had seen somebody mention it on the uh, Steam Deck subreddit, and it made me realize that I was using the back paddles completely wrong. The back paddles are the R4, R5, L4, and L5 buttons that you access using your ring finger and your pinky fingers on the back of the Steam Deck. And I always refer to them as grip buttons because the way that I tended to use them for that first month of having the Steam Deck was I would grip them with my fingers in order to activate them, more like I was squeezing the grip of the Steam Deck. And once somebody had posted on the subreddit not to do that, but instead to push on the back of the screen like you're trying to push into the screen from the rear of the device, once I tried that, I was like, oh my God, this is so much better. Now, this is definitely one that you want to learn sooner rather than later because you don't want to build up a bunch of bad muscle memory. It's kind of like learning to type with two fingers and then trying to learn to type afterwards using all of your fingers. It's so much easier to push at the back of the device instead of squeezing those grips. So the sooner that you get this one in your head, the better. Number three, on a recent episode of On Deck, which is my podcast all about the Steam Deck and PC gaming, I asked the audience to help me out with something. I said, why is it that sometimes when I install a game, it asks me where do I want to install it, either on my internal memory or on my SD card, and then other times it just installs wherever it wants. Well, so many of you reached out and told me that the reason is because if you install it from the store, it's going to ask you where you want to install it. But if you install it from your library, then it doesn't ask you. However, if it tends to install in a place that you don't want it to, you can go into the settings, into your storage, and you can move a game from one storage location to another in order to free up space. Or if a game doesn't perform too well on the SD card, you can move it over to the internal storage, which is going to be faster. Next up, number four, some games that are not made with the Steam Deck in mind will be expecting you, the user, to do something, but they won't tell you what it is. And what I mean by that is, for example, Bioshock Remastered. I have that installed on my Steam Deck. It runs great, 60 frames per second, super fun game. I love Bioshock. It's one of my favorite video game experiences of all time. So of course, it was one of the first things that I installed on the Steam Deck. When I start that game up, for some reason, it just hangs for a minute. And I don't know what made me think of it, but I just reached over and tapped the touch screen and then it brought up the beginning menu so that I could start a new game or continue from one of my old saves that got downloaded from the cloud. I'm not sure what input it's expecting, but as soon as I interacted to the screen, it worked, and none of the buttons seemed to have done anything until I touched the screen. So if you start a game and it doesn't start right away, try tapping the touch screen and see if that will spur it forward. I'm not sure if it'll always work, 
but it's always something that I try. Before I get to the last one, do me a favor and click on that like button right down below. And then after that, if you've got questions, comments, or some tips to share, leave them in the comment section below the like button, and maybe I will make a future video about it. All right, number five is Remote Play Together. Remote Play Together is something that's been in Steam, like built into Steam, for a really long time. And I never really messed with it until I got the Steam Deck and I was trying all of the different things because I had a show about the Steam Deck. And the thing that I found is that Remote Play Together allows you to take a game that you own and play it locally, but then stream that game to other people who don't own the game and they can join you and play in your game on a completely different device in a completely different location over the internet and you can play together. And I have to be honest, it actually works surprisingly well. So first off, it has to be a game that supports that API. And if it doesn't support that API, you can't do it. In order to find out if it works, all you do is start up a game, hit the quick access menu, on the quick access menu up at the top, you're going to see the remote play together icon. If you go up there, you can start a session, invite your friends, and then start playing. It works really, really well. I've played it with both Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, Streets of Rage 4, as well as a bunch of other games. And the coolest thing is that the other people who are playing don't have to own the game at all. All right, that's it for this video. But before you go, if you're looking for more intro tips that new Steam Deck owners need, check out this video right here. And if you wanna get a handle on how Steam input works, check out this video down here. If it's your first time here, please subscribe for Nerdvest. I'm Bill, stay awesome everybody.